I left my body, and I was now this huge, expanded balloon. It was the most exhilarating feeling, like somebody was pouring honey all over my brain, and it was running down through all my nerves, emotions of acceptance and joy. That was your vibration, that you were just this exuberant, overwhelmingly happy, joyful being. And you were home. It was just absolute ecstasy. There was another thing that was going on, and it was this knowledge. It's like all this knowledge is scripted on the universe. All you have to do is think about a subject and it just floods in. I remember as a kid in college, you had a thing called a microfish. You bring that thing up on a screen and then if you spun it, then the pages would just flash by. And that's what it was. It was just coming super fast. And there was just this flood of information. The whole script of a human being, it's all there on the sky of time. Nothing was impossible in that realm. As I was flying along, I remember one thing that was really powerful was, how in the world did I believe I was this dude? How did I believe I was Bill? I had this whole personality and I had these relationships, I had these likes and dislikes. All of that had dropped away. It was like I was playing a game and I was pretending to be this person, this human being. We're all just playing these parts. It's all a game. I think that the object of the game is can we wake up in the game and realize who we are with joy and kindness and patience. So I was flying along and everything was just marvelous. Everything was wonderful and I just felt so at home. And then all of a sudden I landed in a place that was solid. Right in front of me, there were these three little hooded guys and they were overwhelmed to see me. And I felt immediately good in their presence. They were asking me questions all of a sudden, like, uh, how was it? Uh, what did you see? What did you learn? What can you tell us? Uh, I was really confused and they were uh, amused by that. And one of them stepped forward and he turned to the other two and he said, he doesn't remember us. And they all started giggling. It was like I had just gotten off the roller coaster and they were my best friends and they were back at the landing and they all wanted to know how was the roller coaster. And I hadn't really gotten my wits about me to tell them. This other guy, he was like this tall, wispy guy. He's made out of energy, like a swirling tornado or a, a whirlpool. He moved forward. Parts of him would separate and then catch up. And he had this big smile on his face. You could tell he was super happy. And more than that, you could feel his love. Um, and as he got closer to me, my throat just tightened and my chest was like overinflating. I felt like I was going to drop to my knees and break down crying uncontrollably from love. Historically, our, our ancestors, they have names for them. They're these non-physical beings that bounce between our ability to uh, perceive them. And they called them things like helpers, guides, angels. Yeah, I do think this is some sort of connection to a higher self. So I said, what's next? A review of my life? And you guys want to get started with that? Something in me, the fire captain experience or something, was, okay, there's a procedure here, and you know, let's, let's get busy with it. The tall, wispy guy, he just cracked up. When he stopped chuckling, he said, okay, sure, let's do that. This wasn't a review of life. 
This was a show and tell. It was like a, a tour of the dimensions of our situation here. I didn't have any huge regrets. I told a few stories about jobs I wish I'd taken and uh, a couple other things. And then he just, it was almost comical. He just stepped forward like a father, like picking a toddler off the ground, you know? He says, okay, that's enough. Time to go back.